Hey everyone, welcome to this lovely stream for Toon Boom. It's for animation and design and stuff. I'm just saying stuff because I know people are just connecting now. So if I say anything too important, people are going to miss it. And we don't want that. But yeah, so welcome to this uh, stream of the week where we're going to talk about art and specifically character design. So I'll give a little minute so that you guys can sit comfortably. And um, yeah, and have fun. <laughs> so as <laughs> usual, um, with this stream, um, what we do is we, you know, we have a somewhat plan prepared. But it's always better if we can answer you guys' questions. So if you have any questions, you can always let us know in the chat, either on YouTube or on Twitch. I'm going to be checking both. Of course, they, we can't answer every question if there's too many. And of course, if these questions include sensitive material or NDA kind of question, uh, you know, we cannot disclose a non-disclosure agreement. <laughs> so <laughs> we cannot, there are some things we can talk about, but for the most part, we love to answer you guys' this question. So feel free to answer, uh, to answer them. I mean, to ask them. And um, yeah, I think it's going to be fun. So today, like I said, we are going to talk about character design specifically um, and how to kind of do character design in harmony because because you can do that in harmony and lots of people ignore that and um, for those of you who don't know me my name is mel people also know me as z bird brain on youtube i like to make tutorials about animations and i also like to play games <laughs> and i am jane joined today with a good friend uh, who will introduce himself right now hey hello i'm alejandro rafael mendoza just a a friend of Z Bird Brain. <laughs> yeah. He's an animator, I guess. Right. I got invited to do a character sign. Luckily, I have some example over here if you see. I do see look, it. Oh, look at all this character. Beautiful. So, I think we're going to learn how to create, like, funny characters. Yeah, or... because, guys, character design is not just about making a character and calling it a day. I mean, it can be that if you want, but, um, like, everything else in art, there are some little tips and advice and quote-unquote rules. I don't think they're rules more than, like, advice that you may or may not follow to make a character no, I will not say better but more like it, it's not about making a character better but it's about making a character really tell the story you wanted it to tell so that's kind of what we're going to do today yeah I think we're going to talk about proportion or yeah. because when I do character assign I do the head first and <laughs> if I need to be like a little bit bigger, <laughs> if I need to be a little bit bigger, I you can't see it right now, but I do my fingers and I like measure it. And then, oh, here it is. Oh, here it is. You know, put on my finger there. Sometimes I just imagine since I always do it all the time. But you can practice a little bit here. Like this kind of the proportion of the character. For example, it's like three heads. So this <clears throat> body. Proportion. Yeah. Proportion is an, is an important aspect of then we're gonna the talk about design. Uh, the colors. 
I think um, it's better like talk about the color and shape at the same time. Yeah. Well, I mean, color is one thing and shape is another thing. Yeah. But they're all important. Like a yellow circle. What does that mean? Hmm? What does that mean? Uh, nobody knows. What does that mean? It's the sun or is it cheese <laughs> or pancake? It's a chill radiated. Like, I want to be famous, but I'm chill at the same time. <laughs> So yeah, there's proportion, the <laughs> there's colors, there's um, shapes. And I think there's also, how do I, how would I put it? It's like the, the angle, like, do you have a sharp character? Or do you have like a smooth character <laughs> with a smooth brain? <laughs> not a wrinkle, not a valley, <laughs> just a smooth brain. Every idea is just like right up. <laughs> but we still like them. Yeah, so honestly, you guys, we could we could talk about character design for 17 million hours, but we won't. We only have an hour. So, of course, we're not going to cover everything. So we kept it to like this brief list of like five or five main um, elements. And we're going to try to go through them as we can during the hour. But we might we might tangent into something else or we might do more or less. But, you know, that's our plan for now. So before we start, I'm just going to go see the chat if we have anyone who said anything. No, all good on Twitch and all good in YouTube. People are just very surprised to hear my voice that when it's not sped up. <laughs> not yes, like I am a normal human being outside of YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> I don't always speak like an alien chipmunk <laughs> bird thing <laughs> but i can <laughs> but i won't <laughs> um i would say you should you should put it on your stream oh yeah i could do that <laughs> voice voice changer voice reveal <laughs> voice reveal Okay, so which one is the kind of rule advice that we are going to talk about that you want to start with? Which one is your like go to your not your favorite, but like the the one you were going to go to at first? Well, mm -hmm. I know I have this character that I did a long time ago uh, for Halloween, and it's the ghost see. doll. <laughs> the ghost doll. Yeah. So right now, let's be honest, just do it. It's, when you like practice a lot doing proportion, do it like automatically. But yo, okay. that is an important point. People often ask, I want to get better at design, but I don't know what to do. And like all the trace is the same pose all the time and I'm like dude you have to practice and I think you have to like open up your shape language so like you want to be better at drawing people well try to get try to draw people that sit or like many different poses of sitting or like different end shapes or, or arm and, like it's not about trying to recreate realistically what a pose is but try to get the essence of it and I think the more you do it, like you, you kind of build yourself a library of go to like <laughs> lines and angles and stuff. At least that's how it works for me because my brain doesn't work well trying to like see images inside. <laughs> like, if I, yo, there's some people who just think of a design and they can kind of like trace it on the paper and it's just there. But I'm not like that. I need to think a lot, I need to find like reference and stuff. And by building myself a little library of um, quick gesture and poses, it really helps. I don't know if that's what you meant, but that's what it means for me. Yes. It's, it's hard to explain it because it's, you're doing so for so long is you just can't see it anymore. <laughs> I can explain it. But yeah, like um, let's say, uh, let's 
I mean, the crocodile like... and the bird is a very good example because, like, the crocodile yeah. is so much bigger, and uh, and then the bird is uh, tiny, and it's got like these tiny stick legs. But that's important because you have to know how big your character is going to be because if it's a very small character that's often going to be small in the screen, if you give it too much detail, then it can become a detailed mess. So the amount of detail also is very important to, to kind of see what is the size of your character compared to, to others. Exactly like... Um... Oh my god, it's so hard to join and talk at the same time. <laughs> it's okay, that's why I'm doing the talking. For example, for the alligator, I put like a, like a sack, a, a, a circle for the head and a, in a sack. So the, and the tail, just a nail. Of course, for the bird Z, imagine like hey. imagine this. <laughs> this is the side of the head, the side of the body, and probably like half of the circles of the leg. Tiny Legos. <laughs> I never draw the the their arms arms. So I think there's arms. Like, they're just wings. <laughs> I love it. No, I love it. It makes it different than the legs. And I think that's an important word. Different and, and contrast. Y you have to try to get contrast in your character. And some great places to have contrast is, let's say that you have a character, and like Ali was describing, you can kind of divide it in three. There's like the head, the torso, and the legs. If you put details in the top, the middle, and the bottom, all have so much details that it can create like a detailed mess and you don't really know where to look uh, which is not inherently bad but it's it's in my opinion a bit misguiding whereas i when i design when, when i design character i do prefer to kind of decide which is going to have the most details so let's say i let's say the you see the head has more details, then I'll try to get a more streamlined body. If the character wears a very extravagant dress with lots of details on the legs, I'll try to make the rest of it a bit more tame so that it's not too crowded and then your eye kind of knows where to look in a way. But that being said, like I said before, they're kind of advice. They're not rules to follow because on the yeah. other hand, I once had to design like a monster that was supposed to be like confusing and kind of scary and stuff so for that monster i did put details all over the body like the head the torso the the legos because then it made the creature kind of unsettling and hard to focus on because that's what you want you don't want your eyes to be easily guided to a scary creature you want it to like be confused and scared and stuff so that's that can be something you you do but to break rules you have to know them first so yeah, I was saying a lot of talking so that you could draw, and I'm glad that it worked. Nice drawing. <laughs> <laughs> you have any self, anything to add on the on what I was saying about contrast uh, in design? Yeah, yeah, it's it's right that like, uh, you need to learn the rules to to know to know to break it. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Uh... And as you draw a little more, I'm just going to go check the chat if we have anything. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Where are you, people? Um, Nothing on Twitch, nothing on YouTube. Except people demanding that I don't speed up my videos on YouTube. But you know what? Not going to happen. I need them to be sped up for many reasons. And I would like people to respect my choice. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm seeing the chat. Hey, please always continue with this sound. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is useful for anatomy yeah. for a character sign. Oh, if you're gonna do anatomy like super realistic, um, uh, <laughs> damn. Um, 
I used to do realistic stuff. Let's see. It's always like a ball. I always draw like a circle, the line. Always make the, the line curve. You know, the ball is curved. Don't do this. Oh, yeah, that's important. It's going to be a flat face if you've done this, or you do this. So. Hey, we always... actually have questions in the chat. Whoop, whoop. Someone asked, yeah. how useful do you think anatomy is for character design? I can answer first. I think it's pretty darn important, but in a different way than some people will put it. Like, it's not about learning how, well, it is. it can be about learning how muscles intertwine with each other, but I think mm -hmm. the first thing you should get if you want to study anatomy, because otherwise you're just going to get discouraged, honestly. If you study anatomy, I think it's more, personally, it's more about the pose and the flow of a pose rather than trying to study how the muscles connect with each other. Because once you draw the gestures and you feel the pose, the more you do it, after that, you can start to focus, like, when I fold the, when I, not fold, when I move the arm like how do the muscles react this is something you can learn after but if you just start your journey being like i will buy all the and skeletons and anatomy books then i will draw the skeletons like no if you just draw skeletons you'll have your art being very very rigid so in my in my opinion you start with gestures and as you get more at ease with the concept of drawing from from life from looking at life start to focus more on little things what do you think, Ali? About I learned. Anatomy? I learned. Well, I learned drawing first, and then anatomy. Anatomy. Um, Same. I remember in college, it was we have to like take a photo of ourselves, and then draw our muscle and everything. It was so weird. <laughs> <laughs> of yourself? Oh my of god! Of yourself, yeah. <laughs> You had to draw and everything with where the muscle go, where the uh, you know this thing here over there. I'm not a, I'm not a doctor, so I don't know nothing about. <laughs> and and like mind mind you guys, English is none of our uh, first language, so like we can we can handle conversation, we can talk about animation, but please don't ask us about limbs, all their calling muscles. I don't know anything about that in English, so I'm sorry. <laughs> Even when I do rigging, it's like top arm and bottom arm. I don't know which one is the forearm, which one is the arm. Me neither. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> you, you don't either. Please help us in the chat. <laughs> which <laughs> which is, the, is the forearm connected to the shoulder or the wrist? I think forearm is the one where the wrist is attached to. I think the arm is the one that is on the on top, but <laughs> I might be wrong. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. <laughs> All this to say, we both agree, learn to draw, and after that, learn to do anatomy. Mm -hmm. Because they come hand in hand, but they're not like, yeah. exclusively necessary to one another. Get a good adventure, like, oh my gosh, is this, um, this muscle go over here? So it's like a puzzle. It's the body shape is like a puzzle. That is true. Oh, oh, I okay. I have something to add though about um, anatomy. I know this stream is not about anatomy, so we're gonna move on after. Yeah. But I am someone who struggles to draw most of the time. Okay, I'm not. <laughs> I don't. I, I I draw good, but it, I I never had the easy way. Like like. Some people just get it. I don't. Like, you have to work my butt off to achieve anything. Okay, in anatomy, for me, just drawing doesn't work. I need someone to explain me concepts. Like I used to struggle just to do like from the the head to the shoulder, like the neck part with that thing. And then I just asked my best friend. I was like, I was like, yo, how do you do it? And she was like, it's easy. And then. She said it as she drew it. And I was like, oh, my God, it is easy. Thank you, Fish Race. And then um, everything was easier. So sometimes if you see yourself struggling, try to find videos or live streams, haha, wink, wink, of people drawing, but like explaining their process as they go. I know on our Discord community, we have Doodle uh, making our anatomy stream every few weeks. 
and she explains so well how she does it and it really helps so maybe you just need someone to explain it to you but yeah it is important for character design because it's going to help you so much like this is factual <laughs> Trying to draw fast here. Oops. Yeah. Um, and I think we had another question that was important. Oh, someone just asked, uh, what is the skinning skinning tab, not the onion, uh, for? Is it for games and for switching characters to prison game? Yeah, so unrelated to character design, guys, the skin and tab is just for if you're making a game with unity um, and harmony. So yeah, it's not related to character design. If you want to learn more, there's a documentation page about it. So it's really just for gaming. Um, yeah. Um, Okay, so now we can go back to what we were talking about, which is design. Hey, you're getting there. I love these little designs. So yeah, we were talking about like proportions before. Is there anything we want to add about proportions before we move on? Okay, I have to say, um, is, is it me one of the arm of the alligator, like the one that is facing away from the camera? Is it too small? Maybe. That's why it's a sketch. Yeah. And that is why what I just did there, this is important. If you design, <laughs> if, if, like we advise to share your design to friends and people you trust so that they can tell you if something is off or not. Because sometimes you stand at it, you stare at it so much that you don't see small things. And then you just show it to someone and they're like, whoa. Yeah. Yeah. You can fix that. And you can also, like uh, Ali just did, you can, you should always flip, flip. your. <laughs> canvas because then it gives you a fresh pair of eyes on your drawing and you're like what was i doing this is super crooked yeah like this one over here it's laying down yeah each time i draw i i always see that my characters are always leaning too much in the same direction it's always the same my brain is wired weirdly um let's say okay since the proportion is just simple just measure the head and repeat. Like how, how big they wanted. Example, this and, one over here. And what we're saying is not that your character should always be four or five or six head high. That's yeah, not what we're saying. Anything. What we're saying is that it's a good reference so that after that you can draw the character and always have kind of the same proportions. Like how many heads are in the rest of the character is going to help you kind of have a consistency in your drawings. Talk about color. Yeah, let's talk about colors. Let's see. I you have want to say uh, anything or should I start? Let me find the image. Yeah, you can start. But let me find okay. the image. So for colors, before in the meantime that Ali finds what he was what he wanted to show, for colors you should. Go read about color theory because it's very, very interesting. Don't stop at color theory. Like it's just a guideline. And after that, you do whatever yeah, you want uh, with it. That's serious. But it does teach a lot of cool things. Like follow, it, it's good to follow like how colors kind of vibe with each other. And that's what we mean by color theory. What I don't mean is when people are like, um, if you do something in blue, it has to be something calm. It's like, no, that's not exactly what we mean. It's more like, um, you know, like colors, how they go together. And I know that one of the, one of the examples I give a lot when I teach the kids, for example, it's like, if you draw a character and you want the character to be light and quick on its feet or like to look lighter, usually you're going to go with a lighter color because they they usually have less of a big contrast and big impact. So if your character is all dressed in pale orange or like like you know pale because I'm thinking Halloween so like something pale green for example and then you give it dark black black boots that character is gonna look heavier than if you have a character with like pale green clothes and like 
light gray shoes or like white shoes he's going to look lighter just because his feet are less con contrasted and they're less like um they have less weight compared to the rest so um yeah contrast in color and which one you use have a big impact over your character like if you have a very calm character don't go putting lots of contrasted high saturation colors because it's going to give two different information so yeah what were you going to talk about Ali? oh for example this character she um i just created this for halloween a lot um i started to put color with her this is the, my first time doing the color wow um but not the character the character uh, the character is the first time i do i put her color so i like how it turned out and so right now she's let's say she is a chill but she is a random character so like a random personality you don't know what's what she's gonna do so let's say it's green for let's say it's a ghost green i put a lot of greens i probably put like a purple if I combine like green and purple, that make like a, a confusion, a confusion personality. Mm -hmm. If I put a, like a, let's say, a, hmm. Hmm. Like, like, <laughs> I remember, just try to remember what, what I learned. Like sometimes also depending on the like not just for character design but like for background design. If you want a color to look bright, usually it's not about making the color bright but darkening the other colors around it. So um, one of the good examples I give is, is if you want something to shine, like in real life, if you want to show, hey, look, I have a glow stick. Look how shiny it is. If you show it in broad daylight. It's not going to have a lot, as much as impact as if you crack it at night and then you're like, oh, look, this this thing shines. So it's it also has to do with the colors around the character. Yeah. What are you drawing now? I'm trying to draw her again. <sighs> And sometimes you just have to try colors and just see how they feel to you. My, when I was in animation school, our, we had a color teacher. And one thing, you know, we didn't agree with everything our teacher said. Oh, same. Like, same here. <laughs> but one thing I really agreed on is he taught us that color is a discussion more than anything. And I was like, what the heck? Um, but he was absolutely correct now looking looking back like on the spot i was like what the what what the esoteric weird crap is this but actually it was actually very very inspiring because he's like using the when you're because he came from like traditional media so he used to do lots of painting back in these days and now he was like we can embrace computer as a technology and use it for what it can bring us and he was like when you're in the software and you can do control u to change the hue and saturation, or when you're in harmony and you can just pick the color and change the hue from the picker, this is great because then which, you know, you want the shirt to be orange? Okay, put it orange, but then which saturation, which light do you want, uh, values, I mean, do you want? And you can play with it and it's okay to not know and just try to guess by, you know, sliding the slider and looking at how these colors react to, to each other. So. Yes, there's theory that you should learn, but after that, it's about how you bend and explore that theory. That's going to be ah, very cool. useful. So you, you were saying that you wanted to, to have the purple chain, but you put it green in the end? Well, I was like putting green, you know, because it goes and all that. But then right now I'm like thinking, should I put purple? <laughs> Maybe another well, color like orange. That should be cool. Yeah. I, it, that's the case. I don't want to like stand out. It's just it's just a change, like, oh, I show up. 
But that's a solid sure. question to ask. How important yeah. is the chain? Do you want it to stand out or not? Because I, at first I was like, maybe you want it to stand out, but if not, eh, yeah. we don't know. Color is just. It's a discussion. Um, yeah. A discussion. Uh, let's see. I'm doing that like that. remember what's the bucket the bucket it's in the tools on the left yeah i see there's I see a it. toolbar oh, okay <laughs> <Did some s> <laughs> the struggle okay in the meantime i'm gonna take a look at these chats uh, that seems fine People are thankful for the stream. So that means we're doing a good job. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> By the way, we're halfway through. Oh, what else we can talk? Because I get to prepare a lot. Maybe hmm? shapes? Yeah, we can talk about the shapes, the shapes. Um, so shapes, guys, there's lots of different shapes. But oftentimes, you can narrow it down to what? Like there's triangle, circle, square, rectangles. And oh. they're often going to give a different result in the end. Always different. Save. Always save. Is it and loading? It's, and it's loading. Uh, can I draw? <laughs> it's okay. We can talk. So uh, what I want to say is that, oh, yes, we're talking about shapes, but it's not just about making a character a circle and calling it a day. It can, and then it's a good, like, beginner exercise. But, like, after that, once you kind of know this, you can start to look at characters in media and be like, huh, is that character based on circles, squares, or triangles? And you're going to see a lot of variants in these characters. Sometimes it's not that the character will be a triangle. It'll just be a character that's a bit sharper in its edges. And the character that is more round would be triangle smoother ones. on the edges. No, it's a good hey, what is, Yeah, I'm listening. What are we going to say? <clears throat> just make a lot of shape like this. And you make a character there. It is, Are yeah. You... you just mash him, mash him up together. Say like, whoop. so you make a bunch of shape and then you just move them and you try to make a character. <laughs> yeah, let's put a nose here. Let's put a face here. No, I don't know. It's a good example. Yeah, that's a very good exercise. What you can do also with friend is everybody starts from the same shape and then you see how people are going to take it in so many different directions. <laughs> I like this guy. Mm. I, what else? Uh, shape, color, it's just the basic. And Damn. I was about to say something and I lost it. Uh, it was about the shapes and the colors. And... Oh yeah, I was about to say, see, is um, with these rules, the fun thing is that you can also use them to misguide your viewer in a way. And what I mean by that is that sometimes the look of a character will give up, will give a vibe, but
but maybe you want the character to be the opposite. So maybe you're going to make a, a character look very scary and pointy and stuff, but actually the character is a good character. But because of how it looks, the audience and the other characters might think something of the character. Well, actually, it's not. So that could be cool for like a, a little plot driven thing. Uh, if you just do it all the time, then it just makes your idea all over the plate. So it's not that great. But sometimes you can use it. Maybe you have a character that's that looks scary, but is actually very nice. Or you have a character that looks very nice, but is actually very <laughs> evil. So that could be cool. Because okay. oftentimes, if there's a character that is that has very sharp angles and whatnot, they can look um, scary. But, you know, in the opposite. So that you, you can play with those. Or if the character has very, very... Uh, bright colors and it's actually calm then it's something you can play on but usually you have to be aware of it so that you just just don't do random stuff all the time what do you think the characters yeah to kind of have a character that looks a certain way but acts the way different yeah. oh like you know, give me give uh, the opposite signals <laughs> You know what's a good example? Uh, what? Again, the Tavares be the prime. You know. The what? The primal? Primal, yeah. The one that's like a caveman. Oh, right. T-rex. A good one example. They look that mad. That is a good example. Look... Oh my god, there's only like 15 ish minutes left. Okay, we're doing good. We're doing good. Uh, we talked about colors. We talked about proportion, uh, contrast. We touched a little bit about it. Um, I think one thing we didn't touch on about uh, a lot is uh, the detail amount and how to like you know spread it and show your character be detailed and not. I think that's a cool thing we can talk about. So. Uh... Is it detail yeah. like person more personal stuff? Well, you know, like if you, if your character has like five million stripes <laughs> and dots <laughs> and buttons, um, one thing I I was raised with and I will always agree on is um, like our teacher would say, if you add a detail, ask yourself, is it useful to the story? <laughs> If yes, okay. If it's not useful to the story, then ask yourself, is it making the character much longer to draw? If not, okay. But if yes, mm, keep considering the details. So they were like, if you add a detail, it better add something to the story or be very easy to draw. Um, because if you add details that bring nothing to the character, and they bring nothing to your story. They just look cool. Mm. Our director would always be like, if, it, if it's just because it looks cool, there's other things we can do that looks cool. Make them useful to the story. So for your ghost character here, um, the tail is just a flat color. And it looks mm. great like that. But maybe someone could have been like, um, I'm going to add like 17 stripes to the tail just because I think it looks cool. Like then, oh. yeah, <laughs> then it's like, okay, but why? Because if you add details, you will have to redraw that detail all the time. Because we're talking about animation here, not just any kind of design. If it's for a graphic novel, then that's different. If it's just for a poster, that is also different. Now we're talking about animation. So every detail you add will need to be redrawn 5 million thousand times. <laughs> so you have to be very careful about that. And um, yeah, that will really impact how successful your animation is. And back then, I looked at uh, the making of of the movie Coraline, Coraline, the the thing in stop motion with like the button eyes. It's super scary, by the way. I'm a thirty years old lady who is very scared of that movie. <laughs> um, but it's I watched the making of, and they were talking that for Coraline, they. She, she was supposed to have like these freckles on her face and 
they were like, each new freckle we put is going to be like maybe like $70,000 or something more in the budget. And they were like, oh we God. don't have that. Yeah, I don't remember how much, but they're like, if we had, if there's six freckles, then it's six dots we need to draw on every of our faces and of our puppets. And they were like, that's just one detail. And if you had one dot, then it's one dot you had, you have to add more for every. And in their case, it's every puppet. But if it's animation, like hand-drawn, it means every frame. So they were like, each time you add a detail, ask yourself, is it worth it? Chances are it's not always worth it. <laughs> so you can remove it. And sometimes, like, instead of having 17 stripes, maybe you just want to have three, and the, and the message will be the same. So that's what our teachers would insist on. It was the message you want to give with that detail. Yeah. Anything to add about details, friends? That's a cool drawing. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes I put detail like that, like you said, like lines. But it's, I think it's better when you put, like, in comics. Mm -hmm. Not animation, but I don't know. It's just a personal thing. Well, that's also something I, I hear a lot when it's like, well, it's my personal choice. And I think it is a personal choice up until you have a crew of 40 animators working for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, it's not a personal choice anymore. It's like a technical thing. Um, and that's why, folks, sometimes you see that in animation it's much simpler. And when you look at the promotional art or like posters or covers um, or illustration, like they're, they're going to add maybe more wrinkles and more cloth folds and stuff. So, um, you know, it, and also if it's a close up, then you can add more details. But if it's a far away shot, maybe you don't need 17 folds in your shirt. Um, let me see if there's some chat little action here that I can do. Yeah, there's at. one there. Um, oh, there is. Okay, okay. When I'm messing around with the character ideas, I tend to draw a face, usually cartoony style, and then the rest of the head, then the body. I know this, this makes the other features less interesting. Hmm. What do you mean? Yeah. Kerbike, please explain to us what do you mean. In the meantime, I'll try to understand. So... Maybe it's because sometimes some people will draw the face and then the rest of the body will be a bit lacking. And if I talk from experience as a kid, I used to be really good at drawing the head because we're all good at drawing the head because it's the first thing we draw, let's be honest, and it's cool. Yeah, like and then the rest of the body sometimes is lacking because we don't practice enough, maybe? Yeah. What do you think, friend? Alligator friend? <laughs> It's good. Um, I am the same thing. I put like a lot of detail in the body, but when when time is tough, uh, <laughs> it's <laughs> just do like a the circle, the shape, and then you see what like you see like what pose you want to put on the character. Let's see. Oh, like what I'm doing right now. About yeah just construct it curve bike and also before i forget there's another thing in character design that i think is super important it's the direction of your character if you have a character and you want to portray it as very very like quick on its feet and and in the in the how do we say in english it's like a <laughs> hmm uh, very like dynamic and and quick and straight to the point and something like something someone very like dynamic you have to you would probably prefer to have a character that points upwards so, like the design you will try to kind of elevate the, the the design so on the opposite if you want a more droopy character like sometimes maybe someone that's more uh, kind of sad or pessimistic like you're gonna try to have the design drag the character down a little more maybe like more long heavy hairstyle or like a heavy clothing like that are going to kind of drag the character down in a direction that is down and not that i love everything about that movie but that is one thing that was very interesting with um uh 
how is it called? In, oh, Inside Out movie. You know, the Disney movie with like the characters that are the brain and stuff. They, it was very interesting to see how they portrayed the different emotion. And I remember that like the, the happy one had like these hair that were like going upward and yeah, everything was kind movie. of elevated. And the, the blue characters, the sad, the sad character was much more like um, droopy in, in like the direction of the lines. So there's so much to think about in the design. Hmm. Oh, we got more explanation. I think you hit the nail on the head. Oh, <laughs> pun intended. <laughs> There's not much else I want to put into it after the face. <laughs> and I suck at figures and I, and stuff. Hence my anatomy question earlier. Well, I mean, I'm a very honest person. And I said it. I'm the same. Back, usually, I am very good at drawing the head. And then the body used to be less great. But with practice it becomes a bit easier and better. Yeah, it's always like that. Practice, you have to practice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> how, can, how can you be better at practice? But, you know, I'm the first one who gets annoyed sometimes when people just say, well, practice. I'm like, yeah, but how? Like, um. Or when people say, like, I practice all the time, but I'm like, but how do you practice? So, like, well, I do this and that, but, I mean, maybe that's not enough. Or maybe that's not the right thing for you. Because, <laughs> like I said, for me, just drawing anatomy does nothing. It does nothing good for me. Just, like, redrawing pictures of, like, naked people the, doesn't do much. <laughs> but if I have someone explaining me concepts or... Oh, and oftentimes... Just because a lot of school teachers love to be against that. They're like, never trace or reference other artists' art because you're going to copy their mistakes. Which is true to some point. But by copying other too. people's art... What? They told me that too. Yeah, right? Everybody <laughs> says that. But I think it's super wrong. And I think you need balance. Because yes, if you only draw other people's art, then you can just keep drawing what their interpretation that's bad but if you only draw anatomy that is like based on human beings you're only drawing from life and you might miss on a lot of good ideas for schematization like like how you process that information so i think a healthy balance is important and like i said i used to struggle for like the neck connecting to the shoulder and the two arms like the elbow area like when the arm bent i used to be like super not good at it and then i was like okay i'm gonna copy some artists that i think are good at it that i like how it looks and then by tracing and and understanding how they did it i was like oh it all makes sense now so i think if you struggle go copy other people trace it <laughs> there's nothing wrong with tracing actually actually there is something wrong it's when you trace and then you're like look what i did no if you trace it, own it and, you know, keep it in your sketchbook or something. But working from other people's point of view is very great because then you learn from what they learned. So, yeah, inverse, yeah. how do you say it? Um, inverse engineer. Oh, do yeah. It. Yeah. Like, like reverse engineer. <laughs> yeah. Like <laughs> if you see a character you like, learn about the shape, imagine the shape inside their character. They oh okay, there's a I circle. To... Oh, you could do that. Okay. Yeah. That it's I did that when for Gandhi Tavaraski. I don't know if I pronounce it right, his last name. But I was like, obsessed with him. Like <gasps> his character. Oh my god, is is uh Dexter. Oh you no. Know, oh yeah, like this guy, yeah, he's amazing. I was like, oh my god, I need to learn. I learn everything. By myself, like, okay, a circle. Okay, there's a there, the expression. Oh, okay, there. And that's all. And then yeah, little by little, engineer. you learn. You have your own style, little by little. Yeah. Make this sexy <laughs> talk. How you call it? Uh, from the. <laughs> Star Trek? Spock? What? That's 
that's fuck. not Spock. <laughs> just, that's <laughs> fuck. It's sexy now. <laughs> that's so not Spock. That's Spock. <laughs> he looks like I don't know. He looks like um, what's his name? Oh, I forgot. Oh, uh, I forgot. Yeah, piercing too. It's like it's a guy in like these martial art movies. Anyway, <laughs> that's not Spock from Star that's Trek. Spock. You can anger fisheries. <laughs> it's your head cannon. <laughs> uh, I was about to say something super important. Oh yeah, I, I remember. Um, I think like to trace other people's art and like to to reference it at least. For me, I think it's very helpful when you're trying to learn like muscle schematization, schematization, because like you know like uh, one guy that everybody knows, like Stephen Silver. He did so much for people, right? Um, the way he would schematize muscles and, and characters like this. I know that a lot of people got influenced by that style, which is fine. Because then it was just one way to, to see it. And um, yeah, so if you struggle with anatomy, like I said, just try to reference from other people. And... And it's like when I drew, like I worked on some productions and I can say that each time I finished the production, that style of the production was not ingrained in my brain. I would, I would like, it's sometimes it subconsciously affects the way you draw. And I think that's beautiful. And that's why everybody draws kind of a different way. Um, because at the end of the day, the way you draw, like your quote unquote style will be influenced from all your other experiences. Like I know that when I finished on Wakfu, my eyes look would all, often look like Wakfu style. And when I finished Big Girl 6, the way I drew my hands for a while was very influenced by that. So and that's normal. I noticed, I noticed that. <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. and, and the mouth shapes and the hands. And, you know, they just get integrated in my hand, in, in my in my in the way I draw. So, like, my style at the moment is probably a mix of Bigger Bill 6, Wakfu, and Glitch text all together. And that's how I draw. But um, some friends who might have worked on Tangled, um, like, maybe maybe they worked on Tangled, Hilda, and, I don't know, I'll pick another show, like, a, maybe Bigger Bill 6. Maybe they did the same as me. So, they we have one show in common, but they have a lot of other th reference that I don't. So, then their style is different. And we always pick a little bit from everything. And that's the beauty of art. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of funny. What are you doing now? Yes. <sighs> Something like that, but... You know good exercise we used to do when I was in animation school? We used to call these the, um, the Blitz. Um, when I was in an animation school for our short films, it would say like, okay, for like Friday the 12th or something, everybody put a picture of your character on the server and everybody would do it. And then for a whole day, I think, or like a whole afternoon, they would show the character and then everybody in the class would draw it. And then they would show another one and everybody would draw it. So that means for each character, you would get like 30 different versions. And that was super cool because nobody draws the same. Nobody has the same style. And if you get your character drawn by other people, you might you might pick up on things that you didn't think about. And it's really, really cool. Um, let's talk that, about so. the tools that Harmony. Oh, tools yeah, tools. we forgot. There was something we wanted to show in Harmony. It's OK, because we have five minutes left, so it's perfect. What is that tool, oh. Ali? The, the good tool, imagine. You make it a character and let's say this first let's say my character's here 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 like that he's everywhere yeah and you want to make like a a turnaround let's put it here maintain the the line you can make a line here oh my god look oh whoa Whoa, and you can even show the grid. Show the grid, Ali. Show the grid with the button with the eyeball. Not, the eyeball no, not, one. This one. not this one. It's in the well, guide's view. 
near your slider. Yeah, you can show a grid and then you can use the sliders to see the little squares. Play with the it. slider, it's Andy. So light. No, play with the slider. Yeah, I'm playing it right now. Look. There's a number of lane. No, make you're not. This, make it square. I'm not doing nothing. No, not either. this. <laughs> Look at the guide's view. N near the eye in the grid, there's a little slider. Number of line. Right, a bit to the right. To yeah. the right. To the right. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Click on it. Yeah, look at that. Oh, it's a school. That's a grid. Anyway. I don't like use that a lot, but school. yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I know people who does. Okay, I do. <laughs> okay, I don't. <laughs> so you can at least make a... Okay, there's the line. and Cool. Now you know where the head goes. The turn around. You know, you would get what I mean. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Other thing that I like to use, it's the guide over here for, let's say, perspective. Oh my God, this is so nice. Who has this? Nobody, only Harmony. Oh, I know it's Clip Studio have it, but. I don't use it. I only use Harmony for, for this. Perfect. Make a square. Oh. Love it. <laughs> Phenomenal. I always use this for my backgrounds. Yeah, it's amazing. If you guys want to learn about perspective, but you're still to to like inexperienced and scared try to google isometric perspective and you know harmony has the isometric guide it's what i call the baby steps of perspective it's so easy to use and i recommend it for everyone and i think we're done so we'll have to close this up do you have anything else to add friend um copy people yeah. But don't show it. <laughs> and where can we find you, Ali? Oh, uh, you can if you like my <clears throat> my style, my art, you know, original, you know, you know. <laughs> Just kidding. Um go to my Twitter, L Art yeah, Stuff. But send me the links on the Discord and I'll post them now into the chat. Or oh, you can right click my profile and see it. No, send me because I have to write something else in the meantime. Um, also, if while I receive these links and I share them in the chat, um, I want to make sure that you guys check out the links that Toonbo Animation just posted into the chat. There's oh, like yeah. community stuff. There's a Twitter. And um, if you want to learn more about animation, feel free to check out my YouTube channel where I stream every once in a while. With Ali. So we, if you want to hear more of us, come to the YouTube. I'm going to share it in the chat. And if you want to see what Ali does on his own, it's amazing. You should go check it out. All the designs and all the cool stories. And the link will be here in a second. Oh, it's there. Yay. So this is for Ali. Get it shared on YouTube and on Twitch. And for me, I'm pretty easy to find. It's on the YouTubes yeah. right here. And because it's Halloween, I just want to say that on our Discord server, we are hosting a lot of fun Halloween drawing games. So if anyone wants to come in, I'm going to show you the link right here. Join us for some Halloween fun and some cool workshops about anatomy and whatnot. So check this out. And I think with that, um, I think I will have to uh, say goodbye, people. <laughs> Bye.